Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another episode on the After Maghrib podcast where today we are going to try to understand if our communities are racist. Did any of our holy prophets or holy imams have any African descent in them as well as is your parents racist when it comes to the time of marriage? As always, before we begin today's conversation, I'm joined by my co-host who, know, who needs no introduction. Brother Ahmed, Salaam Alaikum. Salaam Alaikum, Sayyidina. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Nice to see you again. Nice to be back as well. How's, likewise, how's likewise. Your week? Wallah week has been great, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I said Wallah, I know last week we spoke about well, it. I'm uh, mentioning Wallah too much. Can't say it, can't That's say it. No double. lie, it's, Alhamdulillah, it's been alhamdulillah, a great week. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And brothers and sisters, great to have you back as well. If you're new to the channel, if this is your first time here, I promise you it's worth the ride, inshallah, the journey that we're on together. So click subscribe now. Do it right now. Hit that notification bell. So every time we upload, every Thursday, inshallah, you're the first to hear about it and inshallah, the first to see. But Sage, you said we're discussing something very interesting today. Yes. Racism. Racism. And doing that, uh, well, joining us rather for that conversation mm. is a good friend, Muhammad Ali. Salam alaikum. Salam wa rahmatullah. How you doing, bro? Salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, all good, man. Pleasure to be here. Like, Pleasure likewise, to nice to have you on Pleasure as well. Have yeah. Have you been Absolutely. tuning in? Have you seen? Yeah, man. Ones? I've been watching uh, some of your like maybe earlier podcasts. Yeah. Uh, I watched a recent one uh, with uh, the Sheikh yeah. Salim Bimji. Very good. Very informative. And yeah, you guys have been keeping it keeping it good, informal, like good for us to you know be able to connect. So yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. It's been going alhamdulillah. very well. So, said you asked the question, ya Allah. which I'm going to ask you first. Bismillah. Is your community or are our communities that you're part of racist? My um, communities that I'm a part of, may Allah bless them all. Uh, <laughs> I'll start with that. <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> But are they racist? I don't know. Now, no, definitely not. I don't believe. But back in the day, growing up, I think they were. And for me, I think I used to see this during Majalis time, you know, being Iraqi. Everyone was Iraqi, from the attendees to the organizers to who was invited to sit on the minbar, mm. recite the eulogies. Every, everyone was Iraqi. But alhamdulillah, things are changing and we're seeing a big, big difference. Now. Muhammad Ali, we're, yeah. we're from the same <laughs> community. Same community. Yeah. yeah. And we're both from... We're both Kojas from yeah. different parts of the world. So I'm I'm obviously South Asian and I don't really have African heritage. Yeah, so obviously um, I've got a mixed Somali and Indian heritage. It's obviously a bit more complicated than that, mm. but you know, we can yeah. leave the rest of that. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's been like, it's been interesting. Um, obviously growing up um, like in our community, um, I felt very part of the community, of course, and I still always uh, like identify myself as Khoja. Um, but there, there have been instances, of course, where you know, it, it, I've been, I felt that you know, I'm a little different, right? Um, so, like, I've got some people that I'm close to, for example, maybe a little bit more darker than me. Um, their experiences in the community sometimes haven't also been uh, that great. Uh, some of them, for example, now wouldn't really come to mosque that often or yeah. you know that kind of thing but you know all in all um like now i would say i don't really experience that kind of thing now but you know growing up you know maybe a few glimpses here and there mm. Mm. it's interesting because i've what about you Ahmed? yeah like <laughs> so it's interesting because we're, we're we've mm. been born and brought up in the same center alhamdulillah and you know like you said it's a home for us mm. you know we we love it mm. and there's so much good in the in the center that we grew up in, this is Istanbul. But yeah, yeah Istanbul. Okay, shout out Istanbul. As we shout do. out, man. Um, but generally speaking, like you said, said I think we're 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 growing. Like mm. the Western Shia community, especially in London, is, we're integrating more often. And the English language you've said in the past is playing a, a big role. Big role. Big I role. think we can echo that as well in our community. Like when I yeah. speak to members of my family, um, like the stories that they have from back home when they were in communities, maybe in Somalia, in East Africa, yeah. um, they experience a lot more. Um, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of factors involved. Obviously, it's not just uh, color of skin. Also, like some classist issues. Yeah. And you know, other problems. But you know, now um, there are a lot of improvements. Of course, there are things that trickle down to the youth. But I would say, all in all, now, like you know, I don't think many people think that way. Uh, our age, especially. Yeah, I agree. So I agree. yeah, alhamdulillah. You know, we're moving in the right direction. I think the, a good place to start is to understand our our beliefs. Okay, yes. and to understand our history. So you mentioned, say, at the beginning, are any of our anbiya or our uh, aima, alayhum as-salam, of 
African heritage. And the reason why we specify African is because, of course, that's the most contentious yes. in terms of ethnicities, which we're going to discuss. And also, obviously, something which I think a lot of people don't really click with. Like, a lot of people are nervous to admit or even to accept whether or whether or not the imams alayhi salam, were, were of, of African heritage. Have, have you got any insight onto that? Any answers? I, I, I don't have uh, a particular answer, but I do believe Brother Muhammad Ali knows uh, more about this than I do. So I'm going to al allow well, you to, inshallah, share this. So obviously, where we're talking about African, mm. obviously African is, is a whole continent. There's different kinds of people in Africa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously, there were, there's the idea of uh, Berber women, I believe it is, um, that were some of the mothers of the Imams. But specifically, when we're coming down to like the ninth Imam, Imam al Jawad, uh, obviously we find some narrations about him um, <coughs> when he was born, even mm. um, that a lot of people were looking at him and thinking he's way too dark to be even the son of Imam al Rada. Interesting. Um, and yeah, they had to bring in the like, you know, the genealogist, you could say, of that time to have a look. And they confirmed, they were like, yeah, this is definitely the son of Imam al Rada. But you can see that even at that time, mm. um, people had this mindset. That you know, and that's the imam of the time. Yeah, for them. So yeah. What was that story you said before before we started the podcast? <laughs> what the uh, Imam Al Hadi? Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is actually something I came across uh, that time when um, there was that there was a bit of fiasco with Sheikh Nuru. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember that. Uh, yeah, uh, I do. But yeah, um, but yeah, I came across this story um, of Imam Al Hadi, um, and they say obviously he would have been a bit more um, like. Kind of like you could, we, we would describe a mixed race complexion, okay. but would have had um, African features as well. And the story it goes, it says that he was riding on a horse, a black horse, and he was wearing black clothes. Um, and a man saw him and he said, like he thought in his head, he said, uh, what is this black upon black upon black? Uh, mm. And the imam stops like nearby him and he looks at him and he says, your heart is even blacker than what you see. Oh, wow. And wow. yeah, and that and that tells you as well. Like when we say Imam Al Jawad, obviously he was dark, but also Imam Al Hadi, the same thing. And you know, Imam Al Askari, obviously also um, mm. African heritage. So yeah, coming to the Imam of our time, you know, there's there's a there's a possibility. Although you know, there's and, there's and yeah, like you said, there's all sorts of like mm, yeah, dispute and exactly. But but this is what something I want to ask, and spe specifically people at home, like if. Imam al Hujjah, Ajallah Faraj al Sharif, was to be black or of a darker skin tone, would you have a problem with it? Like on, a, on a serious level, would you, or your family, your parents, your children, your siblings, anyone have an issue with it? Because if the answer is yes, there's a serious pro problem there. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, whether it's authentic or not. Yeah, of course. It doesn't at all. Shouldn't if the principle mm. is there, like mm. if, if, if you're saying whether it's Imam al-Hadi or Imam al-Jawad Absolutely Alayhi salam Or whether the Imam of our time mm. is of a dark complexion Why does that make a difference? It doesn't, yeah, you're right, absolutely It's, absolutely. it's crazy, it's crazy And mm. you know, like when you ask um, elders in the community Sometimes, some are of course very accepting mm. But sometimes there's um, I think a lot of nervousness and hesitation to answer that question. Oh, no, no, he's, he has nur on his face. Yeah. How can he be black? Or how can he be African? <laughs> no, no, or no, for no. example, you know, something like that. And I, I find that mind boggling. Some, yeah. some no people sense. have even said that about Imam al Jawad. Um, like, obviously, his mother was actually African, Nubian. Yeah. Um, and there are some scholars that argued that. There's a narration that says he had nur on his face, like uh, his, his wife, the one that poisoned him, yeah. Umfawal, I believe. And she said, like, I saw him and he had nur on his face. And then these, some, of the, some scholars have gone and said, yeah, this, this shows he's not black. And it makes you question. It's like, you know, you've it's got nur a shocking, and you've got... It's a childish absolute argument. shocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, it's, it's shocking. Right, that's, that's, that's levels of childishness that you can... Like, how, how indoctrinated do we, or like you said, our scholars have to be yeah. to get to a point where they take nur... As you know, visual representation of their, their their color and their features. You know, if I can actually add, to, I was having a conversation the other day with uh, someone who is a reaver and someone of African descent himself, and we were talking about this. And he asked me a question. He goes, "Do you actually believe all the imams were Arab?" Mm. I, I, that's why I let you answer the question because I don't really know this in full detail. So I told him I've always imagined the imams, for example, as Iraqi. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. "I've always imagined them African." 
And then that made us like think between each other. So wow. an Indian will imagine the holy imams and the prophets being Indian. Mm. Or an Iranian will imagine the holy imams being Iranian, for example. So it really doesn't matter. Maybe. Yeah. Who, uh, you, what feature they are, what ethnicity they are, just who they are. Maybe or maybe not. But, but I think a big thing that contributes to this, and a mm. lot of it we see when we go to Ziyara, mm. is the pictures of the imams that we see, which firstly, I don't think... They're wrong. That's the start of <laughs> I, I, I don't understand it. Like, you know, even if even if it's uh, fiqh-wise is not a problem yeah. and everything, it, it doesn't make sense because, you you know, you're... you're you know, you're, it's, it's interesting, though, that we can recognise them. Like, you can see, like, a painting yeah. and you're like, yeah, that's Imam Ali. Like, yeah. you know, like, yeah, yeah. That, that that's how they draw I, him. I, I remember someone once just... I remember I asked in Iraq, like, how do you know this is, for example, Imam Ali, alayhi salam? And you're because you're selling this portrait, for example, or this piece of frame, or some people are like a carpet sort of fabric yeah. where you can hang on the wall. Mm. Like I was like, How do you know full well that you are telling the customer that this is a portrait of Ali? He goes, Someone told me that the person that drew this saw the Imam in a dream, so this oh is like based gosh. on a dream. So I really don't know. And the thing you know, is, the features come up with the, these. yeah, but <laughs> the features of some of some of these pictures yeah, are yeah. very similar to one another, mm. and mm. also it's very similar to, to art. Work that mm. that took place back in the time when these pictures were drawn. Do you know what I mean? Like specifically, okay. like Persian art. Persian art. Mm. Do you see what I mean? So and you, and you, you said, have the eyebrow in a specific way. Yeah, and the beard, okay. <laughs> the eyelashes. Mm. You know, the lips. There's and, and not just that. It's other mm. things like hair and and no. Like there's there's uh, um, uh, hadith about our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And for example, if he had any blemishes on his face or any 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 beauty marks or whatever you want to call them mm. and some people say no no he was the perfect human being was absolutely flawless visually and aesthetically but you know it doesn't make sense it doesn't it doesn't make sense and it's it's a false narrative that we're teaching our children mm. yeah there's mm. even some paintings with all 12 imams and all yeah, of them yeah. look the same all look the same yeah <laughs> all look the same just the names are different yeah <laughs> I was saying, you said you said that if you're Indian, for example, you imagine the imams as Indian. Personally, I don't. Mm. Personally speaking, because okay. because we've grown up in a very Iraqi centric community. Do you know what I mean? I mm. can echo that. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Absolutely. We've grown up where you guys, by you guys I mean you the guys. Iraqi community, have monopolized in some sense the shitty world, the recitation, mm -hmm. yeah, the the Arabic language. The, the even even the Iraqi influence on English speaking uh, mm. Shia communities. Do you see what I mean? Mm. So in many ways, we're growing up in a world where we're thinking we go to Ziyadah, we go to the Imams. They're they're in Iraq, and the most accessible of Imams right now are in Iraq. Alhamdulillah. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. He's loving it. He's, He's loving, loving it. it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, 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 I I don't know what to tell you apart from Alhamdulillah or Shukr because I have no answer to that. Yeah, I don't know why they dominate. For example, not anymore. I think the world now dominates. You can you can see, mashallah, servants from all around the globe, all around the globe. They're not yeah. Iraqi anymore. I think I can echo that as well. Like obviously, um, I'm very into religion. Obviously, mm. I, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, um, I learned Arabic, right? I tried yeah. to learn Fusha, classical Arabic, right? Uh, and I I understand that and can read it very well. But in terms of like dialects, the only dialect I can understand. Iraqi. Oh, Why? Right. Because that's the only one I'm gonna come across come as across. a Shi'i. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah, we're, well, I mean, we're exposed to it in London. Yeah, like, exactly. Other parts mm. In in the world, we're exposed to loads of Lebanese people, for example. Yeah. Or different, just different communities, but mm. especially us being born and brought up in London, mm. we're exposed to it a lot. Do you know what I mean? Indeed, indeed. And and I think the issues that we have is all like got nothing to do with Islam, to be honest. Like all this racism and discrimination is mm. all like man-made. It's truly man-made because. Islam really didn't care, for example, what color you were or, you know, what country you actually came from. Mm, it was all, what only mattered was your belief with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. That was the only difference. Sorry. And I think there is a, I don't want to misquote the Quranic ayah here, but um, it goes by the, I'm going to find it and bring it up in the conversation as we talk. Yeah, please. And yeah, I think yeah. it's very important to add to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got anything to add? I'm done. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, good man. I think it's interesting as well because when we talk mm. about I know you mentioned earlier about the imams, especially mm. the latter imams. Mm. When we talk about the mother of Imam Hujjaj, Allah mm. Fadr Sharif, are we... I know you've done some research into it. What What is your verdict or opinion or maybe analysis mm. on, on what the current narratives are? Right, yeah. So, obviously, uh, like, 
we're not scholars here. Yeah. yeah. So you 100%. know, just this is just like you know, what I've heard. <laughs> yeah, you know. We end up saying like, it where's every your week. Verdict? Every podcast. Where's yeah, your yeah. verdict? I was like, whoa. No, nah, not verdict. Verdict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you what, know, what's the research? What's yeah, the research? Yeah, like you know, the you? stuff that I've heard. Like you know, obviously, there's two main narratives I've heard mm. that you know, either there's the black bondswoman, which is narrated in some narrations, and then there's the Roman princess narrative. Um, so yeah, there's like, obviously there's a lot of different, um, opinions going around, um, in terms of like authenticity of chains and all this kind of stuff. There are some scholars that say, you know, the black woman is more likely, um, uh, to be true. And obviously on the other hand, there's also other scholars that say the Roman princess one is more likely to be true for different reasons. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's all a bit of a mix to be honest. So yeah, both of them are a possibility. But mm. me personally, um, like I've lent always more towards the Roman princess narrative. Um, the reason for that is because, you know, there's uh, the scholars that I was listening to, um, the way they analysed it um, and explained it was that um, a lot of the narrations with regards to the appearance of the mother, um, they may have come about in situations, for example, where there's a lot of women in the house of Imam Hassan Askari. Um, he doesn't want the people to know which of these are his mother, mm. right? So the appearance specifically mm. saying his mother looks like this or he looks like this. There's narrations about the appearance of the Imam as well, right? Mm. You're describing him as brown. Some of them say uh, like reddish, which is white, basically. So yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the Roman princess narrative, because obviously it talks about the details of the marriage, uh, the scholar that was explaining it, um, he he feels that this is like the strongest way to be able to prove this is actually the mother because it talks yeah, about yeah. the marriage to Imam al Askari rather than just his mother looked like this or he looks like this. Mm. So yeah, there, there, there's all of these you know mm. discussions and you can go around in circles for days. But yeah, mm. ahsan, ahsan, and as promised, I had that. Quranic ayah, so I'm going to mention it. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And that's from chapter 49, verse 13. And it translates to, indeed, the most noble of you is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's most righteous amongst you. Mm. Yeah, so even then, the, the beginning of the verse is also very nice as well. It says that we made you tribes and people. I believe it's the same one. Yeah, but I haven't got that. Uh, you've got that, okay. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. We made you to tribes and people so that you may get to know one no another. One another yes. Yeah, and exactly. And that comes back Sorry. to integration. And, mm. and like, you know, we talked about like our communities like getting to know one another and uh, like let me make this clear like no one's advocating to lose your cultural heritage mm -hmm. you don't need to you shouldn't for yeah, example right. you know say this is may Allah lengthen his life and protect him Amen. has said in his advice to the youth hold on to your mother, mother tongue, tongue yes. for example yes. but at the same time we envisage and we imagine we say this on the podcast at the time of the holy imam when he reappears he will want us to integrate with one another. If I've been going to one centre for my entire life, there's a problem. Especially when I live in London where there's over 30 centres. Or in the UK where there's over 80 centres, mm. shitty centres. There's a problem there. And if I'm, if I'm purely going to my centre, not because of the language they speak, because in my centre they speak English. Mm. But if I'm going just because of the people I know, or I'm comfortable with a ritualistic approach to it, religion, or the, or the mm. way we do things and so on then there's an issue with my certainty of belief if I'm not visiting another centre based on culture and religion. Do you know what I mean? So I, th I think there's a, a big part to play there. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, um, in terms of the love for our imam, that's definitely something that can unite us. And we've seen it happen. There's manifestations of it. We have obviously all the uh, centres that are open now. Al-Akbar, mm. uh, Shabab Sibtain. Uh, Harak al Husseiniya, yeah. uh, all of these, like, you know, started by youth. Of course, there's an Arab touch to it, Arapi touch. Yeah. But, you know, th there's been everyone from like different communities are, are going there. You've got Salam Farmande, which yeah. trans like transcended like Salam every Amen. language you've yes. got. You've got Arabic, mm. English, Swahili, Urdu. Like Kashmiri, I've seen you Danish, know. Dutch, I've seen everything yeah, now. I want to also shout out the Muslim, Muslim community of Essex. I don't yes. know if you guys have been there. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. They are yes, incredible. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Incredible, incredible, mashallah. And shout out to Sheikh Ayub. Sheikh Ayub, yes. and, um, shout out to them. The team there, like they are incredible. They have a committee which is so diverse. You've got people from different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You've got Kojas, you've got people of African origin, you've got people of Pakistani origin, Iranians, and also reverts from different backgrounds. Yeah. You know, and people who, who were Sunni and became Shia, or people who non-Muslim became Shia. So You know, I've been there a number of times, mainly yeah. because I, I recite. I haven't, like, forgive me, yeah, yeah. MCE, if you're listening, yeah. I'm only attending because I'm reciting, but subhanAllah, whenever I've been there, I've always felt welcome, and not just me. Anyone yeah, that yeah, comes yeah. with me, I agree. you know, they, they don't care. You know, you know, Where you're from. what language you speak, or how you look, or you, what center you go to. 
They're always making sure you feel welcome there. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I only that's recently right. just went on Molly the Nabawi. Beautiful. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. That that's like the main event of the year. Like you need to be there for that. Amazing. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Make yeah. sure you come yeah, to see I've seen Sheikh Ayub's son Rashid Haider's uh, Instagram stories. Yeah. yeah. Last year and this year, inshallah, I'll try to attend next year. <laughs> but you know we talked about reverse just now. Mm. Okay. Reverse is something I want to bring up. Mm. Especially yeah. in the conversation of marriage. Marriage. Okay. Mm. Mm. Where do we begin? Like said, it has no end. I don't. I don't think it has an end. And and I look being an Iraqi, for someone marrying just outside of of let's say your city, for them is like a barrier. So you've crossed the red line. Yeah. And you've stepped out. Ah, the woman. I don't know woman being it. So he's not from us, and he'll never be from us. You know that's how deep they see us. But when it comes to someone from a different race, I can only imagine the troubles people have. Trying to find that spouse with their parents agreeing to. Like, mm. I, I, I personally don't know anyone that's had this trouble. I only know when they're trying to marry outside their own city in Iraq. So I don't know. I, I can only imagine being outside of the country. SubhanAllah. I don't know if you've had an experience. Uh, no, I mean, to be honest, I think there's a few levels to it. Okay. Mm. Firstly, mm. If, if you are a reaver yeah. of Asian or Arab background, okay. you're more likely to find a spouse. Which is, which is a messed up. Uh, situation mm, mm. If I have friends Who mm. are Pakistani Sunni Became Shia And easily got married For example to um, People who are Of South Asian heritage And Shia families Or even Arabs Shias Do you know what I mean mm. But if you're a Riva And you're from A white background Or a ba black background Or mm. oriental Or whatever you want to call it Or you know There's an issue there Because sometimes Families will reject it mm. You know Why If I wanted to, Hypothetically If I wanted A friend of mine who um, is a reaver to marry uh, a Shia girl, yeah. let's say, and he's being rejected purely based on, on his cultural and ethnic background, there's an issue there. Do you see I, what I mean? I think it's a, it's a hard one, though, like, considering, obviously, with culture, like, comes language as well, right? Yes. So, like, for example, there are some people that are first generation here, right? They've brought them, like, their mindsets, um, like, from back home. Yeah, mm. they want... They want their daughter-in-law, for example, to be able to communicate with them completely. They might not even speak English well, right? And I feel like that cultural barrier, like, plays a part as well, right? Of course, of course yeah. there's, there's, you know, the skin colour thing. You know, sometimes it's just, no, he's black. Like, he can't, you know. But there's also the other aspect, what which is hard to... say that? you know? Any idea? <sighs> because I can, only, I can only imagine them being born racist. As in, it, you know, uh, I don't think anyone's born racist, man. Mm. I feel like it's it's inherited. Like it's yeah. almost like you know, kids don't kids don't hate anyone. Okay. Kids get taught to hate. Yeah, right? it's conditioning of society. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So yeah, I think it's it's a difficult one to break though, because obviously, you can't really pinpoint necessarily where it's it's purely racist. It's purely yeah. because of skin color. No, I I, I do empathize to mm. a to a degree. Mm. So, for example, if you're a mother or a father and you're born in the fifties or sixties, mm. for example, like many of our parents probably are, and you have been born and brought up in a let's say an Asian community mm. or an Asian country or Arab country, you move to the UK. Your community mm. here is of the same ethnic background. You grow up. You you've you've seen all your friends marry their children to people mm. from the same centre. Exactly. And then your son or daughter says, "I want to marry someone who's black or white or, yeah. or Far East Asian or mm. South American." You're thinking, "Wow, why me? Like, <laughs> why why is this happening to my kids?" Do you know what yeah. I mean? So immediately there's like an inferiority complex that the parents might feel because they think my child is going through something. Mm. Why am I the one who's inflicted up with mm. this task? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that's just outside of, you know, we're not even talking about um, um, the, the religious element of it. We're just talking about the cultural and yeah, ethnic yeah. element of it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. People will question, for example, and, and it's a rightful um, uh, question to have. Is someone converting because they want to marry a girl mm. or a guy? Do you know what mm. I mean? Mm. That's, a, that's a, valid, a valid question, of course, but one shouldn't assume... That's why they're doing mm. it. But it's obviously a very real issue. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. So all in all, I think when, when we're talking about reverts, we have to be realistic. And I, I just want to, from a personal level, I want to say God bless all the parents out there mm. who have reluctantly, but then accepted their son or daughter to marry someone from outside their culture. Because you've done uh, something that so many others couldn't do. And you've done something that many of your friends probably haven't had the courage to do. And that you've looked at, 
a potential daughter or son-in-law and you've given them your trust and you've said, look, this person I trust to be the father or the mother of my grandchildren. I think that's a very noble thing to yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. It's even in line with like, you know, the prophetic tradition, like the prophet, I believe, I don't, I don't want to like mess up the hadith, but paraphrasing, he says that if someone comes to you speaking to the fathers of daughters, uh, someone comes to you, he's got good akhlaq yeah. um, and, you know, I believe it's good religion. He says, yeah. then marry him to your daughter. And if you do not, then you're going to cause discord and yes, yeah. you're going to cause like fitna in on the earth that's like correct that's hadith. huge yeah, huh? yeah you know you didn't paraphrase that's the actual yeah, hadith. That's yeah. Exactly yeah. Hadith. yeah well you know i just wanted to be mm. careful but mm. yeah like causing fitna on the earth like that's a huge statement a make, huge yeah. statement absolutely and yeah i don't think people think of it that way you know when we like in our communities obviously the elders and stuff they have other conditions in their mind and you know it's it's good to have conditions like in in terms of like you know maybe financial things you're worried about your daughter you're worried about your um uh, where they're getting married and stuff and the cultural differences um, but at the end of the day the prophet's given you two conditions the prophet said good akhlaq they're good deen yeah mm. and those things are encompassing deen is everything, everything right it's, yeah. it's your whole it's the whole life a, whole way, a way of life and if he's given you those two conditions those are the two that should be the most important to you mm. so yeah. yeah like definitely mm. Mm. I, I mean the, the the spouses they do want they, yeah. I, they don't have a problem The problem is with the parents mm. So I don't know if, if, if there's a parent out there And you know Maybe your kids Want to get maybe. married To someone from a different race But you know what it is Said it, I know this is mm. This is maybe a bit touchy Or sensitive to say But maybe some of our generation Probably a lot I, I'm going to go out on a limb And say I'd say majority of our generation Would be comfortable If they're a Koja To marry an Iraqi If they're an Iraqi To marry a Pakistani If they're a Pakistani To marry a Lebanese but, and there's a lot and, of it happening. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Mashallah, we just had some good news before the podcast about a friend of yes. ours who's married outside this community. Mm. But Inshallah. the minute you ask about whether someone who's Asian or Arab would marry someone who's not Asian or Arab, like a European or someone who's, like we said, Far East Asian or black yeah. or whatever, they're like, I don't know. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? Sensitivities arise. And to be honest, if you're listening and you have that inside you, Think about it. I mean, don't. I'm not criticizing you because I think innately we've all been, like you said, conditioned to have a level mm. of racism in us. But um, think about why that is the case. Mm, Do you know what I mean? There's. The, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I'm. I've married outside my culture. I married someone from a different country and a different ethnicity, completely different culture. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, it works. You know, and you have to go through, like. Uh, the journey of, of working So not just together. culture Different language Different race Different language Different race Different country mm. Different accent mm. Everything mm. Abdullah So it's been a journey But you learn and it's beautiful You know before I came here I was practicing my Arabic With my wife okay. So I told her about my day From when I woke up To when I came home And I told her my whole In day Arabic. In Arabic Yeah So she's like <laughs> oh, I need to minutes. hear this After the podcast <laughs> Yeah 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 Inshallah But I did So inshallah. I can tell my wife I'm joking nah. <laughs> nah, And she would do the same With me in Urdu yeah. And although mm. my order is not great at all, that's but nice. um, but that's one of the beautiful mm. things you you find in interracial marriage, and um, yeah, I, I I wish we see more of it. You know, it's, I'm I'm gonna it's, it's it's a weird thought I've had a long time ago. Not just about race. I've always thought about, for example, just from a different culture with uh, the a marja, for example, mm. or with a, a high ranking scholar, or someone who we really look up to, allow their son or daughter to marry outside. If they do. Will change the masses, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, that, no, that's a starting point. I think. I think you're right. I think a lot of these um, kind of ideas they do trickle from up down. Because we than look up to them. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. But even with like you know with scholars and with marajit, you'll find that, for example, Sheikh Bishr Najafi, he's Pakistani. What are his followers? Mostly Pakistani. Yeah. Mm. Sheikh Ishaq Fayyad, Afghan. Afghan. Yeah. Who are most of his followers? Afghan. Right, yeah. um, and generally speaking, the the you know the top marja or the ones that are the most followed, what are they usually? They're going to be either Iranian, or they're going to be Iraqi. So you know, even with the scholars that we follow, yeah, you can see that that aspect of you know there's a bit of division, right? You want to follow the guy that he's from, like where you and, you're and from. that's what I said when I said that there's an element of dominance or monopolization, not in exactly. a bad way. Exactly. But you've got the Hausa, for example, yeah. in Iraq. Mm -hmm. You've got the Ayma mm -hmm. in Iraq and Iran, let's, mm -hmm. let's say, for example. Yeah. So there's an element like this: the, the religion becomes branded by a cultural ethnicity, and you can't detach from it. And no one's saying it's a bad thing, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that like Sheikh Bashir and Sheikh Ishaq, yeah, they are both exceptions to yeah, the rule. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So Absolutely. it's incredible, and Mashallah, we have so many, so many high-ranking scholars 
Sheikh Ibrahim Zakzaki, for example. And in the UK, mm. of course, we have Sheikh Noor Muhammad, mm -hmm. you know, um, Sheikh Ahmed Sheikh Hanif, Ayub. Sheikh Ayub, you know, like so many. And I know a lot of these scholars, to be honest, I spoke to a, um, a, a black scholar recently, an, an, an amazing, mashallah, friend of, of Ahlul Bayt TV. And he told me, he said, in, 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 in our culture, in our community, we struggle to get our children married. Mm. He says, simple as, not because we are struggling to find, for example, black Shias. Yeah. He goes, struggling to find anyone who'd want to marry our children who are black. Mm. Now, why is that a problem? Like, you have the daughter or the son of a sheikh. MashaAllah, mm. they were brought up well, educated. They've, they've engaged in the community. They've got diverse, they speak multiple languages. Why mm. would you not want to marry your children to someone like that? I've got like, a genuinely. I'd, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Would you let your son or daughter marry someone else? I, 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 it's easy to say yes. I know. But I'm, I'm, I hope that if I feel like this now, my son is very young, then I hope I'll, 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 be, I'll be even more open mm. when the time comes. Because I might say yes now, and maybe inside there's a creeping hesitance. Do you see what I mean? But I hope, inshallah, when the time comes, inshallah, my son gets married to a, to a beautiful girl and a inshallah. beautiful at heart. And um, wherever she's from in the world. But like you said, um, Muhammad Ali, Good akhlaq and good iman. Absolutely. Like that's mm. got to be a priority. So yeah, definitely. that's me. What about you, Said? You have two young daughters. I have two young daughters. Um, I, I've never really thought. I just thought of it on on the spot here. That's like you. I don't. Th I don't think I would ever want to be in a position where I put race mm. over religion. For inshallah, I don't. don't but come yeah. to I'll be honest, Said. That it is scary. Like I'll be honest, because my son is half Arab. Okay. Okay. And if he was to marry an Arab girl, mm. yeah, my children are pretty much majority Arab. So then I'm thinking like I have generations and ancestors from the same cultural background Ooh, gone, God. gone, yeah. and now my lineage is Arab. Mm. Is is that something bad? Is it something good? It's, it's a weird concept to, to digest. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, but, definitely. But, I think I think that's a big thing as well. Like I, I would obviously think about that. Obviously, I'm from a mixed background. We can mix it more. It's all right. But <laughs> at the same time, there is that aspect of you know like lineage, right? And you know, in our family and our communities as well, like we have a um, uh, like we put a lot of importance on it. Like we know where we come from. Like we have our history. We even have the new book recently uh, yeah, by yeah. The, uh, about the Khoja history and stuff. And yeah, like we put a lot of importance on it to lose all of your like kind of like culture. It, it doesn't sit it's well. It doesn't yeah, yeah. sit well. Like even me, like for example, I would want my children, for example, to speak Kachi, right? I want them to speak Kachi. I want them to understand Swahili. I want them to have a little bit of knowledge about Somali at least mm. so that they're not losing any parts of the culture. I want yeah. them to have what I got, yeah, yeah. right? Um, and yeah, I feel like that's a blessing. Like for me, like I was growing up around like multiple languages, like, and I'm hearing them all. And with languages, you, you feel all different types of culture. Yeah. And that is, it's a blessing because you can go anywhere and you can relate. You can understand people more, right? Um, and I would want that for my children as well. So yeah, like maybe by, you know, getting him to marry someone like, Outside of our community, you know, you're adding a language to the list. Yeah, so, it's, yeah. it can be a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, and that our, our imams, did it. So, yeah, and the absolutely. imams knew, like, absolutely. You know, like they, if you talked about Imam Al, Imam Al Jawad, for example, Sorry. Imam Al Jawad knew that his great grandparents were perhaps entirely Arab, Sorry. and he himself is perhaps you know majority um, East African or Nubian. You'd said, for mm. example, like so, if the imams did it, was you know they're, they're setting the, the tone for us. Mm. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, so I mean, the other thing is, is there's obviously a lot of people who come to our centres who are not from our cultural or ethnic mm. background, okay? Mm. What, what can we do? How do we make people who are, who, you know, who are not from the centre maybe feel more welcome? Yeah, like, I think this goes back to something I was saying earlier on as well, like some people that I'm close to, a bit darker skin or whatever, like when they come in, they, the thing is, when you look different yourself and you know you look different, you'll notice when people are treating you differently or mm. when people are looking at you in a funny way um, or giving you attention like you're different to the rest of the people there. Um, and yeah, I feel like that is, is something that a lot of people that are different in, in their appearance can echo. Um, even myself, like I have experienced that a few times. Like I have felt like um, he's looking at me a bit funny. Like obviously when I grow out my hair, I look more predominantly African. You can see like, you know, I've got African hair and stuff. So, you know, people notice you and they treat you maybe a little bit differently. Um, 
uh, maybe ask you questions. Like I've got that a lot of times actually. Um, obviously, when I say I'm Somali, uh, mixed Somali and Indian, mm. uh, people straight away, oh, you're river. I'm like, my family's been shitty for six generations, bro. Mm. Like you know, it's yeah, and to make people feel different, I feel like that you know it might push them away a little. Uh, especially if they're fresh river, if they're fresh river and they're coming into uh, into the mosques and you know they're people giving them funny looks that might make them feel some kind of way. No, you're very right, Muhammad Ali. And something to add to what you're saying now mm. is that you know when reverts, or shall we say, when someone who from a different ethnicity comes to your own center, let's mm. say you're Iraqi and you see someone with African heritage coming to your center, don't stare at them. I've seen mm. it happen so much times where everyone's just staring or pointing at them you know i actually have a story to share mm. uh i actually met uh, a brother who i know for many many years at the muslim convention in birmingham the other day and he gave me a story of when he went to a center in muharram mm. now listen to this because everyone was looking at me they know who i am i am xyz i'm not gonna bring up his name maybe he doesn't want me to share his name on the, on the podcast and just like they already know me for many years because they see me always attend ramadan they see me always attend in muharram mm. But there was one time where I came day after day in Muharram because I wanted to be part of the majlis. Because even though I don't understand uh, the, the language they are reciting the, the majlis in, because I would sit there and then I'll see him look at me, him look at me, him look at me, one by one, they're all looking. He goes, one day I sat down, the Maulana himself says something, the entire crowd looked at me. He goes, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so yeah, 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 for them, they think they're doing a good thing by saying, look at him, mashallah. But he feels very like, why am I different to you? Mm. Yeah, it's, it's what, isolating. If, 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 we, if Allah is uniting us, why yeah, are you dif course. making difference between of course. us? And he, he wants to be part of this faith. You're making him stand out. Why are we so, you know, in, our, in 21st century Western mm. society, mm. we're so big on discrimination rules and policies in our workplace. We talk about BAME, we talk about representation. The minute it comes to our centers, we forget that. It sounds know? fancy when you mention all these titles yes. and yes. initiatives, but no one's actually implementing But it. also, you know what? One thing that you said is actually something that it is important to notice, that sometimes you do too much. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes some you chef will it. come on the member and he'll be like, oh, you know, we have Bilal, right? He was black. such an it's always Bilal, point. by the way. It's, yeah, always, it's Bilal, always Bilal, right? And... It, it becomes almost pretentious. It becomes like overdoing it. Yeah. So yeah, and it's like, like a tick box criteria. Exactly. It's a tick box. Ah, oh, no, no, we're not racist. Mm. We have a, a companion of the Sahaba of the Holy Prophet who's black. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like you know that thing that they say in, um, especially in uh, the Trump campaign in the US. People say, "No, I'm not racist. I have a black friend." Mm. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's the same concept when you're talking about Islam, and you say, "No, no, I'm not racist. I have a, I have a, uh, a Sahaba of the Holy Prophet." We're gonna like, get it here too now. Like, well, we're not racist. We've got Indian Prime Minister. <laughs> there, yeah, there you go, <laughs> and, 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 a, and a Pakistani <laughs> mayor in London. <laughs> honestly, no, but inshallah, I mean, the mm. the goal is, of course, to to keep growing, to keep working, to 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 find ways to make people feel less awkward, to be less awkward ourselves, and to 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 kind of you know introspect right i mean we have to critique ourselves and say do mm. i have any racism within me or any discrimination you know we have to ask ourselves those those hard tough questions mm. the, if society is like this now and our community is like this now in terms of getting there we're integrating slowly 20 years from now inshallah it will be even more integrated inshallah. and we'll be more cohesive inshallah. you know and at that time when we as as inshallah as viewers our parents or grandparents or whatever are looking to get our children married or we're helping our friends find a spouse for their children or something like that or our children are getting married then what are we going to do are we going to are we going to back away and say no no you can only marry from someone from this center hmm. or are we going to put our cards on the table and say look do you know what this is this is haq haq is is where justice is at the end of the day you know so you know it's, it's a collective effort inshallah we have to encourage each other any last comments I would just say to everyone listening, inshallah, if you have any thoughts or second thoughts about allowing someone else from a different race coming into your own family, marrying your son or daughter, think twice, open your heart. I said. And inshallah, Allah will help you. Yeah. Hamid Ali, pleasure to have you on, man. It's a pleasure to be here. And inshallah, hopefully again in the future. Inshallah, we'll see what happens. Why not? Obviously, you need to subscribe to After Maghrib. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. Big shout out. That's Inshallah. the main point of the entire conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes aside, I just yeah. want to say that I trust me. For me, racism, 
was just within my Iraqi culture as discrimination. So I've actually learned something different, seeing it from both your perspectives. Uh, likewise, thank same. you. No, likewise, Jazakallah Khair. Brothers and sisters, thank you again for tuning in. It's always a pleasure to, to, to be here with you. As always, we are open to feedback, suggestions. We need to hear what you think. But if you want to catch our attention, you need to leave a comment. So drop a comment down below, leave us a like, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget you can follow us on Instagram, on TikTok. And inshallah, we will be back next week. And we look forward to seeing you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.